Morgan Super 3 First Drive, Supercar Cred Without the Supercar Price No filter. That's the best way to describe what it's like to drive the Morgan Super 3. In most modern vehicles, from a Porsche 911 GT3 to a Tesla Model 3 to a Ford F-150, you're protected by an invisible electronic army, digital shapeshifters that seem to warp the laws of physics, changing not just your perception of the road, but also of your talent behind the wheel. Not in the Morgan Super 3. Driving the Super 3 is, essentially, driving the way it used to be, before stability control and lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control established their guardrails of ones and zeros, when the wind streamed through your hair and your elbows stuck out over the bodywork as you wrestled with the steering wheel through turns. It's raw, and it's real. Make the perfect heel and toe downshift in the Morgan Super 3, carve the perfect corner, and you know it's all down to you. Make a mistake, and you own it. No filter. And that's what makes the Morgan Super 3 such an irresistible little sports car. The three-wheeled Super 3 takes Morgan back to its roots. The first car this eccentric English automaker built 113 years ago was a three-wheeler, a single driven wheel at the back, and two up front for better steering and stability. Indeed, Morgan built nothing but three-wheelers until 1936 and didn't end full-time production of three-wheeled cars until 1952. The three-wheeler concept was revived in 2012 with the determinately retro three-wheeler, which was powered by an air-cooled, American-made SNS V-twin motorcycle engine mounted transversely across the nose of the car, echoing the powertrain format and layout of Morgan three-wheelers built until 1939. The Super 3 might channel Morgan's origins, but it's anything but a retro car. Look past the number of wheels and lack of electronic frippery, and the rest of it is a thoroughly modern machine. The chassis is a superformed aluminum monocoque, Morgan's first ever. Bolted to the front of it is a large cast aluminum structure that cradles the engine and provides all the pickup points for the multi-link front suspension. The single rear wheel is located by a twin beam swing arm with coilover shocks on either side, and the beetle-backed bodywork enveloping it is, yes, also superformed aluminum. The floor pan is a non-structural aluminium piece that allows for future powertrain upgrades, including full electric drive. Speaking of drive, the Super 3 rekindles a relationship with Ford Motor Company and Morgan three-wheelers dating back to the F-Series three-wheeler built between 1933 and 1952 that was powered by Ford side valve engines. Under the stubby hood of the Super 3 is a naturally aspirated version of Ford's light and compact 1.5-liter, three-cylinder Dragon engine, used in turbocharged form in the Ford Bronco Sport, as well as the European-spec Ford Focus and Fiesta hatchbacks. The Ford engine drives the Super 3's single rear wheel through a Mazda Miata 5-speed manual transmission connected to a bevel box and carbon fiber reinforced drive belt. The engine produces 118 horsepower at 6,500 rpm and 110 lbft of torque at 4,500 rpm, which makes the Morgan Super 3 the second least powerful car we've driven since the 89 horsepower Smart for 2. The other car? The 2020 Toyota Yaris XLE, which pumps out 106 horsepower. None holds a feeble candle in the wind to Mitsubishi's Mirage, the least powerful new car for sale in America today, which is equipped with a 78 horsepower 1.2 liter triple. But the headline output numbers don't tell the full story. Because the Morgan weighs little more than 1,400 pounds, those modest outputs deliver sprightly performance. The company claims the Super 3 will scoot to 60 miles per hour in about 7.0 seconds and hit a top speed of 130 miles per hour. It feels much faster. That's because the Morgan Super 3 delivers such an elemental, visceral, almost heroic driving experience. It rides so low, you can simply reach over the side and touch the tarmac with your fingertips. It has no roof, no doors, and only vestigial aero screens to keep the bugs out of your teeth. You see the front wheels shimmy and shake and swivel and feel the feedback through the non-assisted steering. You sense millimetric lateral motions through your butt as the single rear tire rides the bumps and cambers the front wheel straddle. The little Ford triple pulls smoothly from low revs, 
but it really starts percolating from about 3000 RPM and spins happily to 6900 RPM, emitting a throaty bark from the optional sport exhaust that exits just past your right ear. The Mazda 5-speed transmission is as snickety-snick quick and crisp through the ratios as ever, and the bottom-hinged pedals are beautifully weighted and aligned, perfect dancing partners for your feet. There's a lovely economy about the Morgan Super 3's controls, from the quick throw of the shifter and the short arc of the clutch pedal to the meaty feel of the brake pedal and the lively throttle response. The expressive steering initially feels low-geared even though it's only 2.5 turns lock-to-lock. -lock. It's then you realize the Super 3 doesn't have a particularly tight turning circle, no bad thing when there are only three wheels on your wagon. It feels a little odd to drive quickly at first, the Morgan Super 3. But you quickly learn that's all part of the three-wheeler experience. The default handling mode is mild understeer, the bespoke, vintage profile 13090 Avon Speedmaster tires on the modernist 20-inch alloy wheels hardly offering the footprint to promote instant turn-in response nor overcome the thrust from the rear wheel. That said, the Super 3 is unlike any four-wheel car when you do get on the power. You don't get the same sensations of roll and squat across the rear axle as you do in a four-wheel car, because, obviously, there isn't one. Also, there's no differential, so the drive you do get is instant and unfettered. Get aggressive with the throttle, and you can easily spin up the rear wheel in slower corners, the 15-inch rim is shod with a 195-65 all-season tire and the Super 3's tail will swing wide, but it all happens progressively. What's so bewitching about the Morgan Super 3 is that from 40 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour on any winding two-lane, you're totally engaged with the art and science of driving. It's a sports car, in the truest sense of the term. Yes, it's minimalist, but cleverly so. You learn to step over the side of the cockpit and brace your feet on an aluminum crossbar in front of the seat before sliding down behind the reach and rake steering wheel. The fixed seats are surprisingly comfortable, and the adjustable pedal box means even those over 6 feet can get comfortable behind the wheel. The interior has been designed to cope with the elements. The seats can be trimmed in water-resistant leather or a vegan technical fabric that's 100% waterproof and can be cleaned with bleach. The digital instruments, housed in cast aluminum pods at the center of the dash, along with all the switchgear, will withstand a quick blast from a jet wash. The rectangular bargeboards along the side of the car that manage the airflow through the cooling radiators on either side of the engine can be fitted with a patented clip system, Morgan's first-ever patent that allows specially designed hard cases, waterproof soft bags, or racks to be attached to them. The clips, and the hardware that attaches to them, will carry up to 44 pounds. A CNC machine luggage rack that sits atop the Super 3's bug tail is also available as an option. We can't buy any of the current four-wheeled Morgans in the US. The Super 3, however, is being homologated for sale here, and the first cars are scheduled to arrive stateside in January 2023, priced from $54,000 plus destination and taxes. That sounds pricey when you consider you can buy a well-specified Mazda Miata or one of the Toyota GR86 slash Subaru BRZ twins for under $40,000, cars that are more practical, sensible daily drivers. But the Morgan Super 3 doesn't play in that territory, it's a sports car that can steal the limelight from noisy, mega-horsepower supercars that are only marginally more practical, can't legally be driven any faster, and cost a whole lot more money. Ferraris and Lembos and Porsches are dime a dozen in places like Beverly Hills and South Beach and Houston and Long Island. But a Morgan Super 3? Now that'll turn heads. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.